Hello and welcome to our Thompson Wright budget webinar on the budget for 2021. Uh, my name is Sarah Bowen, the tax director, and I've got Kat with me, Catherine Hancock, one of our senior tax managers. Hi, Kat. So, um, Rishi gave his 2021 budget on uh, Wednesday, the 3rd of March. I've just left up there a bit of a quote that he said, which sort of sets out, uh, and we'll see that through the presentation. This was a budget of, of three parts, um, the, the supporting, then how we get money back, and then how we, how we build towards our, our future. So the support corridored off quite a few things which we've uh, listed on this slide. And let's start off by talking about uh, the coronavirus job retention scheme or what we all know and love as furlough. This obviously came in way back in, in March 2020 and now we'll carry on all the way to the end of September 2021. So quite a long time, Kat, we've had furlough yes, around four. Um, and obviously it's carrying on beyond the end of when we all should come out of lockdown, I think to help employers gradually bring uh, staff back. Interestingly, that while employees will continue to receive 80% of their salary all the way through, from July, once things are more open, uh, employers are starting to contribute 10% of that, and then that increases to 20% to in August and September. So we've got a nice um, just little table there that shows, shows what the employers are contributing. All the way through, they continue to contribute the employer's national insurance and to their employees' pension contributions. So that all carries on as as was, um, but great news that that's carrying on for to, until September well, for businesses. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So next, um, he announced the um, new grant for the self-employed income support scheme. There's going to be a fourth grant available, and that's going to be from this April. Uh, it's going to cover the period from April, May and June, and it'll be based like it was before, 80% of the three months average trading profits, obviously capped at the £7,500. It's going to be paid in one lump sum again, and you'll be able to claim from late April. What you did announce is that um, people that became self-employed during 1920 are going to be eligible for this grant, which is definitely a welcome yeah. news for a lot of new self-employed people who haven't benefited at all from any of the other grants and haven't had any support so far. Um, he also announced a fifth grant that's going to be available from July, and this is going to cover July, August and September. It's going to be 80% um, of your average profits again, but on you've got to confirm that your turnover has fallen by at least 30% or more to be eligible for the 80%. If your turnover is obviously uh, fallen by less than that, then you're going to be reduced to 30%. So he's tapering it in again like he is the furlough yeah. along those same lines. It's once we start to open up a little bit less support. Yes. Now, obviously, you've got to make your uh, confirm that you've been significantly impacted by coronavirus. Um, and for the first grant, it's between certain dates and the second grant, it will be. So you've got to make an honest assessment. And what we'd recommend is you keep those records now. So any diary entries of how well you've been forced to close, you know, how much staff you've had in, what staff you haven't needed in. Keep all that evidence. So if you get asked in the future, you've got it to hand and you can provide it to substantiate your claim. Um, obviously, he um, announced the 5% reduced rate that for certain sectors and this is going to um, continue for another four months and then from the 1st of October there'll be an interim rate of 12.5% before we return to normal next April. Obviously the sectors that are included in this are the hospitality sector, um, holiday accommodation and attractions. Yeah so theme parks I think get this one don't miss that'd be quite good for the summer hopefully. Yes. He also announced the restart grants so, you know, for businesses that haven't been able to open yet, uh, specifically pubs, bars, restaurants, shops and other businesses that have obviously been hit hard by COVID, they'll be eligible for the £5 billion scheme to help them reopen. So what this means for those businesses is that they will get grants worth up to £6,000 per premises. This is going to help um, non-essential businesses get back on their feet. But he has gone one step further for the businesses that can't open until the 12th of April. So hospitality, hotels, gyms, as well as personal care. Uh, they'll be eligible for up to £18,000 per premises. Uh, obviously, to bear in mind, it is still a taxable grant. 
and the council should be in touch with you to confirm if you're eligible. Um, further details are going to be released in due course. I think that's important to note with everything we're talking about today is obviously these are all the headlines that were announced on Wednesday Brand new this week and then new details come out as, as, as time goes on. So again, a bit of an extension for things like theatres, museums, heritage sites, festivals and music. Um, he's also announced an additional £300 million of funding to the Culture Recovery Fund to help those businesses. So again, he's trying to target help to the businesses that have really been yeah, hit it's going to be by COVID. to those sectors, isn't it? Because they, they do seem to need it the most at the moment. And then the recovery loan scheme. Again, uh, C-bills and bounce back loans have been very well used during the pandemic, but C-bills do end at the end of March. And so he now in announces their replacement, which are these recovery loans. Again, very new at the moment, what we know about them. Um, the headlines are, again, that they're going to guarantee 80% of the finance. Uh, the scheme launches on the 6th of April and lasts until the 31st of December. They will be available through accredited lenders. Again, who will have to apply to be on the panel. Uh, they can either be term loans of overdrafts of £25,001 to £10 million, or it could be invoice finance or indeed asset finance of between £1,000 and £10 million for business. Uh, finance terms for the loans and asset finance are six years and for the overdraft and invoice is for three years. Uh, I think it's interesting, again, that no personal guarantees can be taken on these if you're having a facility up to 250,000 and in no circumstances can anyone's principal private residence be taken as security, which is also always something that worries people before, before they yes, borrow from the businesses. Uh, to be eligible, you've got to be trading in the UK, have been impacted um, by COVID, but be a viable business or you would have been viable were it not for COVID and you can't be um, under in any sort of insolvency um, procedures before you apply for the for the loans. But again, I think these are will be will be great for businesses. I think certainly the sea bills have been very welcome yeah, and the ability absolutely. to get some more of this, this government backed finance in as we recover, because there will be a lot of costs of recovering as people try Definitely. and reopen. Um, so I think that's that's really fantastic. Absolutely. So next on to business rates, obviously you announced business rates holiday, which has been extended now to the end of June. And even after this, those businesses that qualify won't have to pay their full bill. So from the end of July to, from July to the end of this tax year, sorry, business rates are gonna be discounted by up to two thirds. Um, obviously, the original sectors were announced that do qualify, but it's a welcome reduction in cost for businesses to aid their recovery now. I say, it? I think there was a lot of, of calls from the high street from shops saying that, look, if we reopen, but we have to pay our rates, we're not going to be able to survive getting yeah. back, back on our so feet. So. The Chancellor's listened, doesn't he, and yeah. set this measure for them. And then another incentive is the apprenticeship incentive. So obviously very much th this help part of the budget is about keeping people working. That's why we've got furlough so that people can keep the jobs and the apprenticeship incentives obviously to help younger people. Although this new incentive is for apprentices of any age, any isn't age, it? Yes. So mm -hmm. doubling the, the payments that employers can get for taking on, on new apprentices. Yes, because I think originally announced it was 1,500 didn't it, per employee. So a welcome increase. And the flexi apprenticeship for, for people who perhaps can't get a full-time job, but they can get multiple jobs in a sector. And these can be sectors like TV and film industry, perhaps where people have several different jobs working for, for different companies. And so you can have a flexi apprenticeship now, uh, which is which is all, all really good news. Absolutely. Moving on to stamp duty. So obviously he announced the stamp duty holiday. Um, so up until the end of June, this has been extended to no one's going to pay stamp duty up to £500,000. Then from July to September, the nil rate band will be £250,000. So, um, you know, he's not decreasing it back to the original state until the 1st of October. And then that level will be £125,000. Uh, just to recap, this doesn't apply to the surcharge, so the 3% surcharge that applies to additional purchases, you're still going to have to make that payment. Uh, mortgages as well, first time buyers, um, he announced 95% mortgages backed by the government, so the stamp duty holiday I think he's realised hasn't helped all the first time buyers get on the market. Um, 
they, they still need a bit more assistance to get on the property ladder. So this should hopefully help them. There's uh, limited lenders available at the moment. So we did announce uh, Lloyd Santander, Barclays and HSBC, but there should be more lenders follow suit. I think that's shortly. because obviously in the 95% mortgage detail deals that were available once the pandemic started up, so many of those disappeared. So obviously yes, that's exactly. why he's trying to help there. Yeah. So that was the first part of the budget cap, which was him helping out. And now we come on to the second part of the budget, which is more of the, the sort of how he's going to pay for everything he's paid for over the last 12 months. The so devil will be in the details. So yeah. let's talk about some of the things he's announced um, initially. So the first one, he, he sort of said, well, this won't reduce anybody's money in their pocket. And I think it's fair to say that's true. But what he's done is that uh, the personal allowance uh, which we all receive from next month it was already announced that that would increase to 12,570 so he's stuck to that he's also stuck to the higher rate threshold increase to 50,270 however they will not now go up in the way that they normally do so they are now our allowances until April 2026 which is a long time yes absolutely and not only those but other allowances were, thro were were frozen at the same time so some examples in we've got here the inheritance tax threshold personal lifetime allowance for pensions the amount where you, your annual exempt from capital gains tax uh, and then he's also frozen the VAT registration threshold but that's only frozen for two years so this is very much a, a, a stealth sort of tax where people won't feel the impact this year because we've had our normal rise Increase. it'll be um, from next year it'll be from next year and so forth and so forth that so people are going to start to to feel that when they get pay rises and things because you aren't going to have as, as much you're not going to get the extra tax-free pay that we're all used to getting each year so no, unfortunately not um that's one of the ways he's, he's trying to get some money back so changes to corporation tax from the 1st of April 2022, uh, the corporation tax will remain at 19% on company profits. And then from the 1st of April 2023, uh, the rate of corporation tax is going to increase to 25%. And this is for companies whose profits are £250,000 or more. There's going to be um, small businesses that will be protected. There'll be a small business profits rate, and that's going to be maintained at 19% where your profits are 50,000 or less. And then unfortunately, where you fit between the bracket of 50,000 to 250,000 pounds, you will pay at 25%, but there will be marginal relief that's available. Um, obviously old marginal relief calculations are gonna come in um, and we're gonna have to work all those out again. So planning is key now um, to make sure that you're not overpaying on your corporation tax. Absolutely. Uh, he also announced a um, extension to loss carry back of up to two million pound. So this is going to be a welcome cash injection for some um, unincorporated and incorporated businesses. Um, for unincorporated, you'll be looking at the 2021 tax year and the 2021 to 2022. And then for incorporated businesses, it's for accounting periods from the 1st of April 20 to the 31st of March 20 and then the following year. So what you need to do is some planning now to weigh up if it's worth doing a loss carry back claim or carry forward to when the corporation tax rates are higher. And obviously, because it kept, comes from 1st of April 20, some of those accounts may well have been filed. So it might be that people just have to have a look back and decide whether or not they want to do something with losses they've made, they've made previously. So this is quite interesting. I think we sort of alluded to this and we talked about the, the furlough and the self-employed yes. uh, scheme is the, the tax protection task force. So Rishi announced that he was giving £100 million of funding to HMRC to bring in more than 1,250 new people to check what has been claimed during the pandemic. So this is to check that furlough has been correctly claimed and that people haven't been asking their staff to work and then putting them on furlough. This is to check that when you claimed your self-employment grant, you were adversely affected and that you didn't just carry on online and your business carried on as normal and you've made just as much money. Um, and they are really gonna crack down on that. That's obviously a lot of money they're investing in this task force and a, a lot Absolutely. of people that they're, they're, they're putting onto this. Um, I believe from, from, from anecdotal evidence, they've already had a lot of employees phone up to grass, grass yeah. on their employers. And yeah. they've also had a lot of people who whose mate hasn't been as infected but still took the grant 
phoning up to so they are relying a little bit on taxpayers um giving them information but certainly as tax returns start to go in they will be using software to look at those those tax returns and work out if they believe somebody has been been affected they will do things like look at if you put somebody on furlough did they have their out of office on or did they carry on answering their emails if you were claiming that the, the grant as i say did you just carry on online and, and carry on regardless obviously for businesses where you've been properly shut like hairdressers and things it's going to be quite easy to prove that you were you were affected but there will be some businesses where you're going to have to keep quite good evidence so going back to what kat said on an earlier slide it's about keeping diaries to say, well, during this period I was closed or during this period I couldn't get supplies um, and making sure you've got that evidence so that if HMRC do come and ask the question, you've got your evidence to, to say that you, you were entitled and you legitimately claimed. Um, if you didn't legitimately claim, they can obviously claim back the whole thing and there can be penalties. So again, that evidence may help when we come to discussing penalties if HMRC decide to disagree with you. Yeah, it's worth noting that if you look at your claims and think that some of them might have been aided, made an error or are slightly overclaimed, it's worth disclosing that to HMRC now because obviously the penalties will be lighter than if they come to you. So the next uh, part of Rishi's budget was the investment-led recovery. So here he looked at UK infrastructure, Free ports, and I'll just cover those off quickly. He did announce new eight free port locations, and those are listed on the slides. He announced the super deduction, the help to grow, and also the future fund for R&D. So first of all, the super deduction companies who are investing in new equipment can offset those costs against tax for the next two years, plus an additional 30%. So where you plant a machinery uh, would usually qualify for uh, main rate allowances at 80%, you can actually claim 130% now. They've also announced a first year allowance of 50% on most new plant and machinery that qualify for the 6% special rate writing down allowance. Um, there are some conditions to all of these um, reliefs that are available and they can be found on the latest guidance on HMRC online. Then for annual investment allowance, they have extended the £1 million limit for another year. Brilliant. Really good stuff. Absolutely. Um, UK Infrastructure, he um, stated that they would um, support regional economic growth and help get rid of the north-south divide. So there's a bank based in, uh, obviously, Leeds now it's going to be, isn't it? And the bank is tasked with delivering world-class infrastructure by investing in sectors such as renewable energy, carbon capture, storage and transport, etc. So it's all been about being green for the future, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. The objective is to help deliver net zero carbon by 2050. Very good. Then the help to grow. Now, this is um, from June. Small businesses will be able to access a 12 week programme delivered by leading business schools across the UK. There's going to be a limited number of places available over the next three years. But what this means is that you can benefit from free impartial advice on how technology can boost the performance of your business through online platforms. Also, eligible businesses will be able to get up to 50% discount on cost of approved software. Brilliant. So this is going to be um, a welcome support for some again, businesses. Again, it's, about, it's investing in the future. This Absolutely. Is, is investments now, in the future. Full details on this are going to be published in the summer. And then the breakthrough funding. So companies with high R&D intensity uh, that are aiming to raise at least £20 million of funding will be eligible to apply for this. So what, what the government doing here is encouraging private investors to co-invest with the government in highly innovative research and development companies. Very good. So that was, as we said, the, the budget uh, based on the announcements. Obviously, there will be more detail to come. There's always more devil in the detail. Um, we'll update our guidance on our website to account for this. Obviously, if you've got any questions, uh, contact us uh, on, the, on the usual way. And hopefully that was that was helpful. Thanks a lot. Thank you.